by 11 canvas in Photoshop. So we open up Photoshop and select File and New. Now this new document dialog box opens and you can select the name of your file here, uh, change it to whatever you'd like to name it, or you can leave it uh, with the default untitled. Um, you can always rename your file later. I typically just open files uh, with the untitled listed and then rename later, but you can certainly name it anything you like to begin. So for this assignment, I'm going to be making my rule of thirds page for my composition assignment. So that's a personal preference. From here, you're going to select the document type as US paper. Now that's going to automatically populate the, this area here with a letter size document sized at eight and a half by 11 inches with a 300 resolution and RGB color mode at eight bits. Uh, the background contents should be white. All of this should happen automatically, um, but you can enter these manually if you like, but if you select the US Paper Documents um, preset, it'll do it automatically. So you can click OK, and here opens your canvas. So from here, you are ready to work on your assignment. So you're going to open up your images that you've collected. So let me just show you my folder here. Now here are the images that I've found on the internet and here are the images that I've taken. I've separated them into two different folders. So I'm going to open one and then I'm going to open the other. Okay, so I've got two images here to work with. Now, within Photoshop, we have our toolbar over here, and this is your main toolbar. I always suggest working in the Move tool, kind of like your default uh, space to stay. Um, this can be done by selecting this here, uh, this, this top choice with the arrow, or you can, you can see the shortcut um, is the stroke of V on your keyboard. So I always, when I'm done working, or not done working, but in the middle of doing um, a different task in Photoshop, my finger automatically presses V because it's a good resting position to stay in. Because if you're, let's say you're in maybe the brush, um, you might accidentally click and brush something, or the crop tool, you might accidentally crop something that you didn't mean to do. So I suggest staying in the move tool so you don't accidentally do something. Um, you can also, from the move tool, easily zoom in and out on your photo with a command, uh, space bar plus command, click, and zoom out with a space bar option, click. And that is on a PC, a space bar control to zoom in, or a space bar alt to zoom out. So from here, I am going to select all, and I do that with a command or control A, much like in any other program, to select the entire frame of my image. And then I'm going to do a command or control C to copy. All right, so I have on my keyboard copied my image. I'm going to toggle back over to my blank canvas that I've opened. Here are the three tabs of the three images that I have open, and I'm going to toggle back to my blank canvas and do a command or control V to paste. Now for this assignment only, you are able to resize images up. We'll talk more about resizing images later on, uh, but you never want to increase the size of an image because you're trying to stretch or create pixels uh, that aren't there. Uh, so it's going to decrease the quality, but for this assignment it's okay because we're going to be finding probably some smaller images on the internet and it will paste into your 8.5 by 11 the size that it is. So you can see this is fairly small and I am just clicking and dragging with my move tool, my resting position, to relocate it on my canvas. Now I'm going to do a command T, which opens up the tree, free transform tool. You can also find that under Edit, Free Transform. 
but the shortcut you see here is Command or Control T. So to resize an image, you simply click and drag uh, from the edges. Now you can see if I just click and drag, it distorts the image, not maintaining its original aspect ratio. So um, we don't want to do that with images. With text or some other things it might work, but with images we want the dimensions and proportions to remain the same. So to do that, again I just went back my command or control T to free transform, you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click from a corner and drag. This keeps your dimensions locked. If you're not holding the shift key, it will do whatever you drag your mouse to do. So you want to make sure to hold down the shift key and increase or decrease the size of your image, holding it down the whole time. So then I'm going to Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy, and Command or Control V to paste this one over. Then again, Command or Control T for the free transform tool to resize this guy as well. Holding down the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio. So here I've got my two images placed. I'm still resting in the move tool. Now I'm going to switch to the type tool. Uh, you can click on it here, it's the letter T on your toolbar, or you can also quick stroke into it by typing the letter T on your keyboard. I'm all about shortcuts. So here I am going to type my title. Now you can see that nothing is showing up because the last time I used this type tool, the color was set to white. So you can either select the text that you just typed and recolor it. So here we have our color space. You can choose any color you like on this spectrum. You can also, so any color you select, here is the sample preview. You can also come over here and you notice that there's an eyedropper that your cursor turns into and that is the color picker. So you can pick a color that already exists in one of your images um, and use that as your font. I kind of like that. Color. So I'm going to command and enter to seal the typing deal. And then you can always click back on the type to edit it. Command or control enter to secure it. Now this is a little bit small for me. So you can either do one of two things to change your font. You can click it and select all and come back up here to your uh, toolbar, change the font type. Let's go with maybe this one. And change the size like I just showed you. Or um, you can go back to the move tool. Again, that's a quick stroke of V, or you can come up here and click this. And then I'm going to do the same command or control T to free transform the text. So you can do this as well. All right, now I'm actually going to put this up here, and again, I'm in the Move tool. I'm just clicking on the image and dragging it, okay? So you want to, um, I'm sorry, Command or Control click on the image that you want to adjust to move it around. The other way to move things around or work on the particular space or layer that you want to work on is by coming over to your Layers palette. So here we have the layer of the beach chair, we have the layer of the tree with the tire, and we have the layer of the title. We also have the background layer, which is going to exist in every image that you open. So you always want to have your history palette and your layers palette open. You come up to the window and select them. If they're not, if you're, if they're not visible or if they're not checked, you can find them here and open them up. So you can individually select on the layer to work on it, or you can command or control click within the shot. You can also use your arrows on your keyboard to make minor adjustments to move things as well. Okay, so then I'm going to type my description here of why these do what they do. Period. 
um, I'm going to change the font down to 12 because I've typed a lot more than just that, right, in my description. I've fully explained why both of these images represent the rule. Command or Control click to seal the deal. And I'm just about done with the basics of this page. Now, <clears throat> I have suggested for you to explore some more tools. Now, um, this is, you know, essentially fine. This is the basics of what I've asked for for this assignment, but I think we can do better. If you were to be finished, you would want to save your file. And you do that by going to File, Save As, and navigating to where you want to save it. And I recommend saving a working, in progress, editable file. So I've got a Pages in Progress folder here, as well as a Finished Pages folder. But your page, it, Pages in Progress, your working file is going to be a Photoshop file. Now that's .psd. A Photoshop file saves the layers of your image, so you can go back and work on them individually later. This is a good thing to do if you're not finished or think you might want to work on it again later. Um, it's always a good idea to have a PSD file if you're not complete. So you can go back and make edits. Maybe you run out of time in the lab or, or something. So you want to save your PSD file as a working file so you can return to it later and have all of this stuff. Then if you're absolutely done, you can save it as a JPEG, and you're going to want to save that in your finished pages folder as a file format JPEG. Okay, now that's going to automatically flatten your image and flatten these layers and compress it and make it a smaller file. So you're not going to be able to come back and edit things, but you are going to be ready to print or make your multi-page PDF, as is the case with this assignment.